One day, I was talking to a friend of mine about my hobby, and he said, it's very, very geeky, but it's very, very cool. It can only be radio controlled helicopters. Welcome to the heli shed. Here we have the rotor head for the helicopter. Uh, this is the 700X uh, rotor head. We can tell that because of these uh, pinky, purpley, anodized areas all over the uh, rotor head. Um, as I said, in part one, this particular helicopter that we're using as the donor machine for the Bell 222 has 700E parts, 700L parts, 700LV2 parts, and 700X parts. And no different than a Mark I Escort, you can have lots of different variations. <laughs> As we know, the donor machine for this project is second hand, third hand. It was a form of Tom Ralph machine. Um, Tom Ralph is a professional. So this particular machine um, has been, um, you know, has been stick banged. Um, I'm not a stick banger. I don't bang sticks. <laughs> So uh, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be stripping this down, we're going to replace in some parts, some, a lot of parts, um, and uh, we're going to make it a nice safe um, rotor head for use um, in the Bell 222. These anodized parts here, I'm going to replace those with silver parts um, because I don't know about you, but I didn't see any pink on an airwolf. Now, although it's not a, uh, an airwolf, um, it's the same model, Bell 222. Um, and, uh, you know, the rotor head is going to be sticking out the fuselage and I want silver parts here rather than actually uh, anodized, um, uh, anodized pink or anodized purple. I'm going to keep the swash plate though, which has got this red anodization around it, purely because this is a DFC or direct flight control um, swash plate. So for those beginners out there, um, essentially I'm going to be keeping this part, the swash plate, um, and I'm going to be getting rid of the rest of it here. Right then, quick description of the rotor head assembly. Um, a lot of you know this anyway, but there will be some of you out there who don't, or want to just a quick reminder, so let's zip through it. Um, we've got the rotor blade grips here and here, connected to the rotor head, and that's connected via a, 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 a shaft that goes all the way through the rotor head and connects into the rotor blade grips, and that shaft is called a feathering shaft, and we'll see that when we take it apart. The rotor head is connected to uh, the main shaft. Oh, let me, there, there we go, can you see that? There it is there. Um, via two bolts, one bolt here and one bolt here. And these are known as Jesus bolts. They're known as Jesus bolts because he's got the whole world in his hand. Ultimately, those bolts connect, um, go straight through the main shaft um, and ensure that the whole rotor head assembly here indeed rotates at the same time and at the same speed as the main shaft. Without those Jesus bolts, uh, this main head here, the rotor head and the blade grips, simply would not uh, rotate the same speed of the shaft. So those Jesus bolts are really, really important. On the rotor blade grips, we've got these uh, these arms coming off directly here, and these arms are connected directly to the swash plate, which we'll talk about in a minute, via these control rods. Um, and at the end of the 
um, arm here, uh, you can see there is a small ball and that ball is known as a ball joint and that ball simply sits in that captive plastic area. And it never ceases to amaze me how such vital areas on radio controlled helicopters are made out of plastic. Um, but you know what? This is not a cheap version. They pretty much all are. It does the job. Um, there is a correct way of putting these in and we'll cover that when we put it together. Coming down here onto the rotor head, we can see these uh, arms coming off the rotor head and these are called washout arms um, and they connect directly to what is known as a follower. And this follower um, heads into the direction of rotation of the rotor head. The rotor head spins clockwise and so as it's spinning around the rotor, uh, the uh, followers here um, head into the direction of rotation. The followers are directly connected to the swash plate and the swash plate is here. Um, and as we move our controls and our helicopter left and right and forward and backwards and up and down, um, this then has a direct correlated effect onto the rotor blade grips, i.e. changing the pitch. Uh, changing the pitch of the rotor blade grips will change the effect um, that um, uh, the, the blades have on the helicopter and what it does. When we give left and right aileron, it will move left and it will move right. When we give forward and backwards uh, elevator, it will move forward and backwards. And of course, when we give up and down, i.e. pitch um, via the swash plate, it, the helicopter will move up and down. Your is controlled via a servo to the rear rudder. Um, and so that gives us our left and right. And then we have six degrees of freedom. Final thing I'll say about the swash plate, and, uh, and that is this. It is an amazing piece of uh, uh, mechanics, if you like. Uh, to this day, it still amazes me uh, how this swash plate works. Um, but you know what? It does. Uh, I'm not advanced enough to be able to understand intimately phaseology, as they call it on uh, how the aerodynamics work on the rotor blades, but it is just fascinating uh, for those of you who are technically minded. For those of you who are not technically minded, then um, follow the video for the setup, uh, do it properly, do it right, do it once, um, and then do it again, and then do it again, um, and just make sure that you're comfortable with um, how the swash plate is indeed set up. Um, but it's an amazing piece of, uh, piece of um, um, mechanics. Right, without further ado, let's now strip this down.
Okay, um, so here we have the, the complete rotor head assembly in front of us. Um, the only thing I haven't also taken out is the thrust bearings from here, but we're going to do some replacement parts now. Um, this, these rotor blade grips, um, as you can see, are pretty messed up over the years. Um, you can see that uh, you know aluminium being a soft metal, it started to round off where the um, where the nut is uh, captured, uh, and it's all scratched up, and um, you know it's in a bad bad way, as we can see. Um, saying that, it's perfectly fine. You could use this, uh, but this is a this is a build specifically for the Bell 222. So we got some new ones. Um, points to note about the thrust bearings, and that is that they are a pain in the butt to get out. We can see that we've got a radial bearing in here, um, and also a radial bearing here. Now this radial bearing is seated seated this way, and this radial bearing. Uh, that you can see in here is seated this way and in between it captures the thrust bearing of which um, you, know, you now know because you've seen the thrust bearing video. If you haven't, you can see that video separately in the Helitech area, uh, Helitech playlist. The thrust bearings are notoriously difficult to get out of here because you've got to get this bearing out this way. Um, so there's lots of ways putting it in a vise and uh, putting a, a tool down and trying to capture it in between the bearings and then giving it a whack, etc. But in my view, there, there's no point me doing this. These rotor blade grips aren't in the best of condition. They need refurbishing essentially um, before I'd use these again. So this is a really important build for me. So I've got some new ones. So let's change them out. Out they go and in come some nice new ones. Now you can see here that uh, we've got a, a, a bearing, a radial bearing already seated, but this side, no bearings inside there where the thrust bearing would sit and then the radial bearing would capture that thrust bearing inside. So these are nice new ones. You can see here, um, obviously, that the, uh, where, the, where the nut is captured, is all um, is perfectly fine. It's not been rounded off. Yeah. So you know these 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 are a great uh, new addition. Great. So new blade grips. The feathering shaft you may have seen in the video there um, was really quite difficult for me to get out. And we can see on the on the um, feathering shaft here it's scored a fair bit. Um, you know it's it's not in good condition at all. Um, do you need to replace it? Uh, yes and no. Um, at the end of the day, it's not bent, so it's going to do its job, but it's not new, and we're replacing uh, new part, uh, old for new, so um, out goes this one. In comparison, you can see that the new one here, this top one, is significantly in better condition than the bottom one. So, new feathering shaft. Next is the rotor head. Uh, this rotor head has seen some, uh, seen some time, um, and um, we can see here, for example, where the captured area for the nut is started to round off. It's the facing's all scratched up, um, and uh, likewise in in here where the Jesus bolt is captured. Um, of course, Jesus, the Jesus bolt. We don't want that being compromised. The dampers are fine. There's some dampers inside here. We won't be taking those out, but we will re be replacing this um, with this one. Um, this is a new, newer one. Uh, it's not brand new, um, uh, but uh, it's only been used um, for. Um, uh, it's not brand new, but it's uh, it hasn't been used, i.e., flown with. And we can see here that the the uh, captured area is a lot better, and and so on. So new roads ahead. Right, what's next? The main shaft. Again, you may have seen I had some difficulty getting it off. The main shaft is quite uh, scored up at the top. Um, it, uh, it's, um, it's perfectly fine. Um, you, you'll be able to use this, um, but again, it's gold because it's tin, um, and I don't really want it to stand out like that. So uh, this, is, uh, this has got to go. So this is going to be replaced with a steel one, um, what we can see here.
Next is the um, rotor blade grip um, extensions here. These uh, these extensions are the rotor blade grips. We said we were going to swap these out, and we are. And we're going to swap these out with silver ones. Uh, aluminium still, but, but silver nonetheless. And they're going to go in there. Of course, because we've got new rotor blade grips, we need new thrust bearings. And those thrust bearings are, are here, so we'll pop them down there. We'll also get rid of these old spacers. These have ultimately been crushed. Um, and although, uh, yeah, they're probably fine, um, the fact of the matter is we're replacing the new parts. So out they go and in come to new ones. Uh, next are the washout arms that we can see here. Um, and I'm going to replace them with these ones. Now these look significantly better in my view, uh, but the points to note for those of you who, um, let me see whether I can, uh, points to note for those of you who um, know a fair bit about the Trek 700, and that is that the 700X arm is slightly smaller. Whether I can just offer that up. Probably not. Let me let me see if I can offer that up. Yeah, it it is it is slightly smaller. I don't know by probably about three mil, if that. There we go. You can see there. Now, what effect is that going to have on the flight of the helicopter? None, because the washout arms roll is solely to ensure the rotation of the swash plate around the main shaft and to keep the swash plate in contact with the rotor head. So actually, it's not going to have any impact on the flight whatsoever. Um, and, uh, you know, the the two and a half mil that I've measured, I'm perfectly fine um, in accepting that. Um, so out these go. And in come the silver ones. I've replaced the bearings inside. Uh, next are the are the washout arm followers. Uh, again, these are fine, but ultimately they've been used, and we can see that via the the back here. I don't know if you can see that just in focus. The back of the washout arm, where the ball goes in, um, is scratched up and so on again these are perfectly fine these will go in the spares but as soon as it's a, a new build out they go and in come some new ones uh, I'm, i've replaced the bolts for the uh, washout arms and these bearings which are tiny tiny bearings um, which capture the followers into the washout arms they too have been replaced the Jesus bolts, out they go. Um, and the top tip there is always, always, always fit new Jesus bolts with new washers and new uh, nylock nuts. Don't forget, we're not going to be Loctite in these because they're going to nylock nuts. Some new Blade Grips collars or collar bolts. Enormous great big things with new nylock nuts. In they go there. And of course, we need two new radial bearings, two new radial bearings um, here here to be able to capture the thrust bearings in the, ray, in the blade grips. So they're gonna go there. Now, what else do we need to swap out? Let me have a look here in my little goodie jar. Yeah, we're gonna replace these screws with those and these screws with those which again are new and there we go that's our new head all we've got to do now is put it together
Right, there we go. One finished rotor head assembly, all with uh, new parts, new bearings, um, and all Loctited in, etc. The eagle-eyed amongst you will notice that the washout arms um, that we replaced originally for the silver ones, um, I've put the, the other ones back on. And the reason for that was what they call the engineer's error, where there was only two mils on one side, it was four mils on another um, on the other side. And when I tested it, I only tested one of them. So um, we've had to put the 730, uh, the 700X washout arms back on. Um, but, um, you know, I'm not too worried about that for the minute. I'll probably spray them silver if I can't get hold of uh, these washout arms in silver. I don't think you can. Um, what else is there to say about this? Um, a uh, top tip for you is uh, that um, before you start to electronically set this up, you need to make sure that me mechanically it's sound. Um, on top of the rotor blade grips, you can see here this uh, line on the rotor blade grips and on the rotor head. And that denotes zero degrees pitch. And when you set the rotor head up, if you're uh, and we'll, we'll, we'll do it like that so they're definitely off but if you if you when you set it up if your washout arms are level in this case I'd say that was probably about level something like that and then look at the top they should be as you can see pretty much smack on so um, that is a, a good head that's set up ready for electronic uh, fine tuning now by the fly barless software Great, there we go. Any questions drop it down in the comments